Kier here from 50 Shades of Mom. Welcome back to my channel. So we are in the kitchen and I'm about to throw up my hair and we're about to get down and dirty because today I'm happy to announce that I am doing a collab with a good friend of mine and a fellow YouTuber, Vanessa, better known as The Lemonade Mom. And we wanted to bring you today fast and easy freezer meals for you to do breakfast for your kiddos for back to school. I know that in the morning, like all the chaos and everything, it's nice to know that you just have something in the freezer that you can just pull out and heat up and they're having a good breakfast that you made quickly. So today I'm gonna show you guys breakfast quesadillas. I have my own little take on like a Jimmy Dean or like a Egg McMuffin kind of sandwich. Uh, smoothie packs, which I think are great. Everything's already in the smoothie bag. All you have to do is dump it in the blender and go. We're going to do pancake and sausage bites, which I thought would sound absolutely amazing. And we're also going to do oatmeal bites, which are my own little take kind of on a granola bar. So those are the five things that I have for you. And then once you're done watching here, I'm gonna put a card up top for you to go check out Vanessa's channel. Go hit that subscribe button, show her some love, comment down below and tell her that I sent you. And then check that description box for the exact link right to this video, you guys. She is making pumpkin waffles. Like, as if this isn't the season for pumpkin everything and then she's making cookies for breakfast. So I'm super excited. She has so many great things. She has five things over there as well. So that's 10 freezer breakfast meal ideas between us both for you to start off with back to school. So let's get into it. I'm gonna throw my hair up and let's start with some breakfast quesadillas. Okay, so first off, we're starting with a breakfast quesadilla. Now I'm gonna say this every time just because it applies to pretty much a lot of the things you're gonna see here, but this recipe is gonna be super versatile. If you wanna use egg whites and bacon, if you want to use regular yellow eggs but do ground sausage, I mean, you can do really anything. The options are endless. But Jake really loves at IHOP this egg omelet that has ham and cheese inside and it's served with salsa and sour cream. So I'm trying to replicate that inside of a quesadilla. So I have two of the large burrito shells that come from BJ's and I'm gonna add egg. Now I, it roughly ended up being about two eggs per quesadilla. I have some already here that I'm going to show you guys what's already frozen. After they were done and assembled, I put them in the frying pan, which I'm going to show you guys how this one toasts all up. And then I cut them while they were still hot and placed them on parchment paper on this cookie sheet and dropped it down into the freezer and flash froze them separated like this. And once they were frozen, I was able to wrap them and place them individually in there so I can just pull them out each morning. So I put my egg down, got it all separated, and here is the ham. So I just took regular cold cut ham and cut it into strips, placed it all around the quesadilla, and then here is the shredded cheese. I get this from BJ's also. All right, so that's it. So now we're just gonna place the cover on this now I'm gonna take you to the frying pan and show you how this toasts up. Okay guys, so while that pan heats up for us to toast up that last one, I wanna show you the pieces that I already did. So each quesadilla got me six of these wedges. So once it was done toasting, like I said, I cut them into these pieces and then I threw them on this cookie sheet on parchment paper and I froze them just like this. So these are the last two wedges that I have to wrap up and these are the ones that I already wrapped. So I just individually wrap them in saran wrap. Now, the actual recipe called for you cutting them in fours. I really thought that portion was a little bit too big. Figure if he likes them and he wants two, that's fine. But even if one of the kiddos wanted the littles, I think that this is a nice size for a breakfast, especially if you're gonna serve this maybe with some fruit and some salsa and sour cream. So now they're in this bag. I have them labeled with the date and then the ham, egg, and cheese quesadillas. And so now we're gonna, I'm gonna wrap these two up and add them to this, and then I'll take you guys to the pan and show you how to heat up that last one. All right, guys, we got a nice piping hot pan. So we're gonna go in with this quesadilla here. It's a perfect fit. I actually love this copper pan. 
If you guys have not ever seen a review on this, I did one, so I'll put an iCard up top or I'll put a link in the description box as well. But this copper pan is absolutely outstanding and it never lets anything burn. I love it. Um, okay, so I'm just going to give this a couple of minutes. I feel like at a medium heat, it needs about two to three minutes per side. So we're going to let this cook up and then we'll come back and flip it over. All right, we've achieved nice, crisp, and golden brown. So I'm actually going to hold this piece up and I'm going to let a pad of butter go up underneath and let it start to melt so that when I flip this over, look at that nice pretty brown. So I'm going to roll the butter around and then now we'll put that side down. Alright, piping hot out of the pan, flipped it over. I'm going to move this little straggler guy out of here. And now I'm just going to show you guys how to cut this the way that I did. So I just cut good and down the center. Now I know it's a little hot to the touch, but you want to do it while it's still as hot as possible, just so that it'll break apart easy. And you want to get them in as fresh as possible. So. Here's where, I, again, I cut them in threes, so I just cut at an angle each way. Same thing with this side. So that's it. So now I'm going to drop these in the drop freezer and flash freeze them. It takes about one to two hours for them to perfectly set. And then I'll just wrap them with saran wrap, add them to the rest of the bag. And that is pre-frozen perfect breakfast ham, egg, and cheese quesadillas. chance to see exactly how I set them up. So this is the sheet pan that I used. You saw me just grease it and butter it. I sprayed a little bit of nonstick spray first and then melted the butter and you saw I kind of rolled it around the pan and then I dropped the eggs in and I baked them for about 10 minutes and then used the cup just so that the cup would make a perfect ring for you to assemble these sandwiches. So again, something completely versatile. You could do egg whites, you could do bacon, sausage, whatever that you choose. So Daryl said he would like ham also, so that helped making just using ham for all of these things. Um, so there's ham and cheese here. So you're gonna place that on the bottom. And then here is your egg circle. You're just gonna place that on top and the English muffin on top of that. I actually pre-toasted them. The recipe I'm going to attach in the description box does not say to toast them, but I happen to like my English muffins a little bit more crispy, so you can do them however it is that you want. But once they were like this and ready to go, I let them just air cool for a few minutes. And then again, same concept. I individually wrapped them, labeled the bag. The recipe, again, in the description box was to only make five. I just added an extra egg. I thought six would be more of an even number, and the English muffins come in packages of six, so that's easy to base the recipe off of that as well so that is it homemade like jimmy dean egg mcmuffin sandwiches for the freezer and on the go okay so next up is these pancake like muffins stuffed with sausage now this is somewhat of a derivative of the pioneer woman's pancake muffins she does them and she stuffs them with blueberries so this concept was derived off of doing sausage 
instead of. So this is another Pinterest recipe, so the link will be in the description box. So the first thing that they call for is adding four tablespoons of white vinegar to a cup and a half of milk. Now this is to make this milk turn into buttermilk. Um, now if you have buttermilk, I'm sure that you could skip this whole step and just do a cup and a half of buttermilk, but the purpose of this is to make that turn. So now that's just gonna sit for five minutes and make itself into buttermilk. And now here's the rest of the ingredients. So we have four tablespoons of melted butter, two eggs, salt, some already ground up breakfast sausage, and it requires it to be chilled already. So it's something you could do ahead of time to set yourself up for prep for this. Vanilla, baking powder, baking soda, white sugar, and flour. So that is it for the ingredients that you will need. So while that is setting up, the first thing it asks you to do is mix all of your dry ingredients together. So I have a bowl right here. I'm gonna put the dry ingredients in there, mix them together, and then it asks you to add the wet ingredients. So I'm gonna crack the eggs into that bowl once that buttermilk is ready, and then I'm gonna add the vanilla and butter, mix it up together, and we'll be back to combine them. Okay, so this is all of our dry ingredients sifted. We have flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And now here's our wet ingredients. So the vinegar did its job and it curdled the milk, and then we added the melted butter, the two eggs, and the vanilla. So let's pour this bad boy in here. All right, so the batter's already getting light and fluffy from me mixing and stirring it up. And then here is that breakfast sausage. Now we're gonna mix this all together and get it in some muffin tin. All right guys, so I thoroughly mixed all the sausage in and then scooped them into the containers. There was no yield on the recipe, so I just kinda had to wing it. I ended up getting 21 out of it. I mean, it says fill the cups two thirds full. Clearly there's a couple that I overfilled, so you probably could get 24, a full 24 out of this recipe, depending on how big your sausage chunks are that you put in there and how much that you fill your pans. But these are gonna go in the oven now at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Mmm, they smell so fabulous. So this is what they look like all out of the oven. So they're like nice and golden brown. You can see the little pieces of sausage in there. So I'm going to wrap these individually in some saran wrap and bag them like I did the rest of them, label them, and get these off into the freezer as well. All right, so here they are, guys. Here are the pancake muffins. I just put today's date and individually wrapped each one of them in saran wrap and then they're put in one big gallon sized bag and off into the freezer they go. Okay guys, so next we are on to baked oatmeal cups to go. So this is like a baked take on a granola bar and I love this because it's more versatility as far as what kind of toppings you can do. So in this recipe you need applesauce, two eggs, your choice of any kind of milk, vanilla, cinnamon, oats, baking powder, brown sugar, salt, and oil. And then these are the toppings that I have. I'm going to do a cinnamon and brown sugar with like a trail mix kind of style. And then this is some grilled pineapple that I'm gonna do with coconut back here, it's like a tropical take. And then this is a fruit compote made with cherries, the Rainer cherries, raspberries, strawberries, and blueberries. So then it's a wide variety of different kind of flavor oatmeal cups for the kids. So the first step that they want you to do is to mix the eggs, oil, and brown sugar together. So I'm gonna start by blending that up. Okay, so here's the oil, eggs, and brown sugar all whisked together. And now it wants you to add the milk, vanilla, cinnamon, salt, and applesauce. So I'm gonna throw that in. All right guys, so that's all blended now. And now the last step that we need to do is just add in the oats and the baking powder. Okay guys, so I 
mixed in the oats and the baking powder, and then I portioned the cups out into another cupcake tin lined with wrappers, and here is that cinnamon and sugar with the trail mix. That's the fruit compote. That is peanut butter drizzled on some chocolate chips, and then that is the Hawaiian pineapple and coconut. I still have probably enough to maybe do another six more, so I'm going to see how the variety of these ones bake up and see which ones are the best, and that's what I'll do with the last of this. So let me get these in the oven, and we'll see how these come out. You guys, these smell so good, and they look awesome. Um, I have to say they all came out pretty good. I think the kids are really going to dig the fruit compote one and the trail mix and even the peanut butter and chocolate, but I think that the coconut ones and the peanut butter chocolate ones look the best, so I think this is what I'm going to make out of that leftover batter, and then I'll show you guys what they look like all bagged up and ready to go. All right, guys, so here are these oatmeal cups. I have the date labeled and they are also individually wrapped in the little bits of saran wrap and then just thrown in here for the freezer. They look so absolutely yummy. We actually already tasted one. They're so, so good. You guys are going to absolutely love them. So off into the freezer. Okay guys, so last but not least, we have our smoothie packs. Now our smoothie packs, again, are super versatile. You guys can pack these any ways you want. The only recipe I'm going to attach below is just this one, because as far as a regular basic smoothie, there are a thousand different recipes on Pinterest that you could find, and this really just is something that suits your liking, what your favorite flavors are. What I'm gonna share with you right now is just a couple of hacks for something that you can do to make your packing your smoothies easier. So one of the things that I love to do is make like my own kind of protein powder. So I love to add things like flaxseed meal. This right here is hemp seed. I use chia seed right here, and then use stuff like the steel cut oats. But now, if you were to put all that in your smoothie, it really can get gritty. So I will take the amount of these things that I'm going to add that I need for my smoothie packs, and I will stick them in a blender, and I will blend them up and make a refined powder of all of these, and then that's what I use as my own protein powder to add to my smoothies. So the other thing that I do is I make ice cubes with an ice cube tray out of my yogurt and juice. So this right here is just a yogurt ice cube that I just spooned regular yogurt into ice cube trays and froze them. But about, this is about two tablespoons each cube. So a lot of recipes will call for a quarter cup, things like that. So you're able to use these in a measurement of about two tablespoons. So I left this one separate so I can show you guys that specifically. Um, and then like this one is my berry one. Now, Keep in mind, if you like to do something like spinach, I love to do spinach in my smoothies because you cannot taste it, but it is a great additive. So when you have spinach in there, however, and you put it in the blender, those things will change the color and it's not always visually appealing, but it always tastes yummy. So in this one, I have the bunch of yogurt cubes and then for the berry one, I froze apple juice and then in there is blueberries and strawberries there's some raspberries in there there's a whole frozen banana there's a beet which another thing the beet gets hidden by all of these other flavors and is a great anti-inflammatory it is really good for throwing in smoothies it actually says that on the beet package like good for smoothies because you don't taste it so I throw in a heap of that protein powder and then the spinach and I pack that one up and that one's ready to go. This here is my tropical version. Again, something that may not be so visually appealing once blended with the spinach, but again, super, super good. Um, so in this one, I did orange juice. See, it's starting to melt already because it's just 
like things that are lightly frozen just to hold shape and make it easier to package. So um, in this one is orange juice cubes and the yogurt cubes, as well as pineapple, mango, the protein powder, the banana, and the spinach. Now, a lot of smoothies, they'll call for ice, but if your items are frozen, you really don't need too much ice. You can throw just a few pieces in for good measure or play with it so that you can play with your consistency. But when I have all of my elements already frozen, then I usually don't add ice because usually the frozen components in here is just good enough. Um, so then last but not least, my absolute favorite smoothie right now is my coffee smoothie. So this thing is so good. So the cubes that I froze are almond milk. This is the one that actually has a recipe that I found on Pinterest, so I will attach that one below. But this one calls for ice and then cold coffee, which I could have froze like cubes, but I really love my cold brew lately. And this chameleon stuff is awesome and it's concentrated. So this calls for one cup. So I'll just add four ounces of this and then four ounces of my Aquasana water to my blender, um, as well as there is a whole banana in there and my protein powder and the coffee. So this ends up tasting like a coffee culotta, one of those new frozen coffees, or almost like a frappuccino, but it's really good. It's got the banana in there and the protein powder, so it's perfect for a morning on the go to substitute your coffee and have a nice protein shake for the morning. And that is it for my smoothie packs. Well, guys, we did it. I got hot. I got sweaty. We completely messed up the kitchen. It is a complete disaster in here, but it is not a disaster in my freezer. I am stocked. I am packed with great and healthy breakfast ideas. So I hope that you're excited and that you liked what I cooked for you guys. And hopefully I can ease your back to school morning just a little bit. Don't forget to go and check out Vanessa. She has great things over there. And if you are here from there, welcome. And if you'd like to stick around and hit my subscribe button, it'll be right there for you so you can catch other videos from me. And otherwise, I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye, guys.